permission to come aboard. Jason Momoa is an American actor, model, producer, screenwriter, and entrepreneur. He is also a handsome Hawaiian man, the mighty warrior Conan, the beloved Khal Drogo, the inimitable Aquaman, and most importantly, he's both a caring family man and all around big and cheerful person. Aquaman, how Jason Momoa lives and how much he earns. Jason Momoa, full name Joseph Jason Namakia Momoa, was born in Honolulu in sunny Hawaii on August 1, 1979. He is the only child of artist Joseph and photographer Connie. The actor's father is a native Hawaiian, while his mother has Indian, German, and Irish roots. Jason's parents divorced when he was a baby. The boy stayed with his mother and moved to Iowa. From an early age, he showed off his athletic abilities and spent his free time outdoors. Growing up, he was interested in mountaineering and axe throwing. After high school, Jason enrolled in a local college where he studied marine biology. As a student, he traveled the world, studying painting in Paris and Buddhism in Tibet. But in his last year, he dropped out of school, deciding to return to the Hawaiian Islands. He was attracted to the ocean and beach life, and he also wanted to establish a connection with his father. Momoa graduated from one of Honolulu's prestigious colleges. In addition, the future actor studied wild animals at the University of Colorado. Soon he was noticed by the famous Japanese designer, Takeo Kokuchi, who invited him to come with him as a model. Jason participated in numerous photo shoots, as well as in local beauty contests, and he also worked as a salesman at a surfer store. In 1999, having won the title of Model of the Year on the island, he began his acting career. The newcomer's debut was his role as Jason Owain in the 10th and 11th seasons of the popular TV series Baywatch. It is of note that the creators of the project preferred Momoa out of the 1,300 candidates, despite the fact that he had no idea how to behave on the set. His character appeared in 40 episodes, and after the series ended, in the full-length spin-off Baywatch Hawaiian Wedding. By the way, during the filming of Baywatch, Jason met actress Simone McKinnon and started an affair. According to some information, it was she who insisted that the Hawaiian attend an acting school, which he graduated from, not really hoping for success. However, Momoa, already by 2004, appeared in the series North Shore, filled with seascapes and semi-naked models. In the same year, he played a small role in the comedy Johnson Family Vacation. The film was released on the big screen and received a lot of flattering reviews from critics and the attention of the audiences. But the real success came to the young actor a year later, when he appeared in the role of Ronan Dex in the TV series Stargate Atlantis. Hi. I heard you died and came back to life. Pretty much. There's a, a few things I still need to do. A recognizable feature of the hero's image was his thick dreadlocks, which Momoa decided to cut off for the final fifth season because his neck ached due to the heavy hairstyle. In order not to disappoint fans, a wig was made. Thanks to his participation in the project, he received offers for roles that later helped him become world famous. Meanwhile, Jason and Simone announced their engagement, but their wedding did not take place. In 2006, the couple broke up. While still in the relationship, Momoa met with the ex-wife of musician Lenny Kravitz, actress Lisa Bonet. The actor was 12 years younger than his lover. He first saw her when the series The Cosby Show was released, where Bonet played the main role. Jason was only eight, but he immediately fell in love with the show and promised himself to meet her at all costs, which happened in 2005. Their first meeting took place in one of the jazz clubs in New York. Jason and Lisa spent the whole night talking at the bar. They looked as though they had known each other all their lives. At the time of their meeting, Jason was 26 and his beloved was 38. In addition, the actress had a daughter, but the couple decided to take their time with the wedding. By the way, the lovers look very cute together. Jason with a manly, frightening, and attractive appearance, and a height of almost six foot four, and a refined petite Lisa, whose height is only five foot two. The lovers perfectly complement each other. In 2007, their daughter Lola Iolani was born, which in Hawaiian means royal hawk. 
A year later, a son was born who was given a very unusual name, Nikoa Wolf Manakoopa Namakia, and this name has meaning. The boy was born at night during a terrible thunderstorm. Nikoa means fighter, mana means willpower, kawa means rain, and po means dark. In addition, the actor is the stepfather of Lisa's daughter from her first marriage, actress and singer Zoe Kravitz, with whom they have a very warm relationship, and their pair tattoos confirm this. But not only the births of his children become important events in Momoa's life, in November 2008, during an argument in a cafe, an unknown person hit him with a broken beer mug. Jason received about 140 stitches. The traces of them became part of the famous image as an actor who almost lost his left eye. The attacker was sentenced to five years in prison. In 2010, Momoa, together with his friends, founded the production company Pride of Gypsies. And after performing a ritual dance of the New Zealand Maori tribe at the auditions, Jason convinced the producers and got into the cast of a new project from HBO, which was promised to turn out into a world-known series. And it turned out to be true. The series Game of Thrones was a real breakthrough. Jason got the role of the most noticeable character, the leader of the formidable Dothraki clan, Khal Drogo. The barbarian's wife, Princess and Khaleesi Daenerys Targaryen, was played by Amelia Clark. Anna, the Drogo, attacking. Anna Vidrikarasan. Unlike her partner, Momoa only appeared in the first season. For the sake of this role, he had to gain weight, which he did with a diet of pizza and Irish Guinness beers. After its release, the project got a cult following, and Jason Momoa in 2011 received the well-deserved award at the CinemaCon Festival in the category Rising Star. It turns out that the actor tried to stop Lisa from watching the series not only because of the love scenes with him, but he did not want her to become another fan of Game of Thrones. In the same year, a remake of the film about the legendary Conan the Barbarian was released, where the actor played the main character. You have a name? My name is Tamara Amalia Jorvi Karushan. And yours is? Conan. Conan. That's it? How many names do I need? Despite the fact that the film failed at the box office and received negative reviews, the role of Conan pushed his name to the top league of young actors in modern Hollywood. His task was not to imitate Arnold Schwarzenegger, in order to achieve the perfect appearance, in Jason's opinion, he trained a lot and dieted. Meanwhile, the harmony and idyllic life of the actor was almost undermined by journalists and envious people. During the premiere of the film Conan the Barbarian, he was kissed by the star of the series Charmed, Rose McGowan. The picture spread all over the internet and gave rise to rumors about the impending divorce of Momoa and Bonet. And one after another, articles appeared in the press pitying the unhappy wife who turns a blind eye to her husband's systematic infidelities. But despite the rumors, the couple stayed together. Despite the success of Game of Thrones and a good income, after the end of filming, Jason was out of work for several years. He accumulated unpaid bills and his debts multiplied, and his family, as the actor himself admitted, even had to star for a while. In 2012, Momoa appeared as a murderer in the film Bullet to the Head. The main role in the film was played by the legendary Sylvester Stallone. I said I was gonna kill you. Yeah. It's kind of fun, isn't it? Just you and me, two professionals. Only one gets away. The actor managed to replenish his family's budget and partially deal with debts in 2014. After the release of the film Road to Paloma, he not only played one of the main roles, but also wrote the script for the film and acted as a director and producer. One of the main roles was played by Lisa Bonet. Meanwhile, the star had several more roles, and while they did not bring him large amounts of money, they kept the family from sliding into financial issues again. The next movie is the action movie Wolves, where the actor played a werewolf and the fantastic horror movie Debug. In this film, Momoa played an employee of the space station struck by a virtual virus. In 2016, Jason played a cannibal who fell in love with his victim in the post-apocalyptic drama The Bad Batch. The film received a special jury prize at the Venice Film Festival. In October of the same year, the world premiere of the comedy thriller Once Upon a Time in Venice took place, in which the actor also played a key role. Hey, look who it is. What's up, Charles? Where's my shit? Yeah, where's your shit? A real success for Momoa, 
turned out to be a collaboration with the DC Comics film universe, thanks to which the actor tried on the image of the superhero Aquaman, who commands water and marine life with a magic trident. For the first time in this role, he appeared before the audience in the movie Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice. In August 2016, the Guinness Brewing Company began to produce a new product named after Momoa, Mano Brew, which the actor happily announced on Instagram. At the same time, he starred in the title role of the historical television series Frontier, about the rivalry of the British Hudson's Bay Company with French and American fur traders at the end of the 18th century and also appeared on the screen as Aquaman again. So in November 2017, fans of DC Comics were able to see the collaboration between famous superheroes, Justice League. You got no powers, no offense. This guy might be working for the enemy, we don't know. You're tripping over your feet and mine. Oof, you're gorgeous. Participation in the film earned Momoa $4 million dollars but the project became a box office failure and received mixed reviews from critics and viewers, which forced the company to reconsider plans for future projects. Meanwhile, Jason and Lisa have reconsidered their relationship and sealed their marriage bonds. The ceremony was held in Topanga, California. The chamber wedding was attended only by close people. Among them were Bonet's daughter from her first marriage, Zoe, actress Elisa Vikander and Michael Fassbender. Curiously, Zoe and Michael once had an affair, but they remained just friends. The newlyweds informed the world about the important event only a few months later, noting that the wedding was just another reason for them to get together with family and friends, and they felt like husband and wife for a long time. In her interviews, Lisa calls her husband a generous leader, which according to her, gives him a rare form of masculinity. It is known that the actor thoroughly prepares for each role. He studied various martial arts techniques before appearing as Conan the Barbarian and Aquaman. And after the wedding, he started practicing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. In 2018, the actor appeared in all his glory in the main role in the film Aquaman, based on the comic book series of the same name by writer and screenwriter Jeff Jones. Hey buddy, you that fish boy from the TV? Oh, great. In addition to Momoa, Matt Damon and Simon Baker auditioned for the role of Aquaman. At the premiere, Jason, along with his children and crew members, performed his favorite ritual dance, which had previously brought him success with Game of Thrones. Impressive graphics simulating the underwater world, large-scale battles, and of course, Momoa's acting, menacingly waving his trident, made the film a cinematic event of the season. The film also included stars like Dolph Lundgren, William Dafoe, Nicole Kidman, Patrick Wilson, and Amber Heard embodied the image of Aquaman's beloved. And although most of the filming did not take place underwater, the conditions couldn't be called simple. They were suspended in the air, and a huge fan blew into their faces. The project turned out to be so successful that it surpassed the 1.14 billion mark at the box office, becoming the most profitable in the DC universe, while the actor himself received an impressive payout of $14 million. Also in 2018, Jason Momoa was awarded the title of the most beautiful man according to the T.C. Candler Internet Portal. Another successful step in the actor's filmography was his work in the Canadian action movie Braven. Momoa's character is a lumberjack who has to engage in an unequal battle with a clan of drug dealers. In the same year, he had the honor to announce the winner at the Academy Award ceremony in the nomination Best Supporting Female Role. Jason went on the stage with Helen Mirren, the actor appeared in a pink suit made of delicate velour, and he had a matching hairband on his arm. Thanks to this image, he was named the most stylish man of the event. In 2019, Momoa joined the cast of the sci-fi series for the Apple TV Plus video service C. The plot tells about people who have lost their sight, whose life changes when twins appear in the tribe who can see. Jason plays a tribal leader living on an isolated mountaintop. How can he? This is our home. We are one, and we fight as one. Prepare for battle. The actor approached his role with great responsibility, working closely with the project coordinator, who is blind from birth, who is responsible for the correct representation of blind people on the screen. In order to experience the life of a man who sees nothing, 
The actor lived in a sleep mask for several weeks. He was paid $600,000 for the first episode alone. Jason has a good sense of humor. He even wanted to become a comedian on Saturday Night Live, which he admitted in the opening monologue to the show. The actor was prevented from becoming a comedian by his busy career, although he still played in several sketches. For example, Momoa as an elf who reports to Santa about the bad behavior of a 13-year-old boy. Before each role requiring impressive musculature, Momoa goes on a diet with a lot of protein, reducing carbohydrate intake. The only thing the actor can't do without is his favorite beer. However, in the summer of 2019, after seeing a picture of Jason on the beach, many were upset by how his figure differs from the screen image. But a lot of fans noted that they liked Momoa, who gained weight without extra abs even more. In 2019, Jason took the part in the promotion of the new album Ordinary Man by Ozzy Osbourne, appearing in the teaser of the song Scary Little Green Men, and voiced Aquaman in the animation project The Lego Movie 2. Fans who were surprised by the actor's published video, where he shaves off his famous beard, also know him as an environmentalist. In this way, Jason decided to draw attention to the problem of plastic and remind people of the importance of proper disposal of garbage. During the same period, the actor joined the Hawaiian protesters who opposed the installation of a 100-foot telescope on Mount Mauna Kea, which they consider sacred. Scientists wanted to install a $1.4 billion device to use it to study distant galaxies. At the same time, the Australian editorial board of GQ magazine awarded Jason Momoa the title of Person of the Year, which was a real surprise for the Hollywood actor. In social media, the artist said he hoped that the award went to him, not only for his film roles, but also for his environmental activism. In February 2020, Momoa appeared in one of the most notable advertisements at the Super Bowl. In the project by Rocket Mortgage, which promotes mortgage services, the actor appeared in a rather unusual way, losing a solid part of his hair and muscles. Also in the video, Jason's wife appears, who helps her skinny husband put a barbell on the rack. By the way, in the video about how the ad was shot, which can be found on Jason's Instagram, it is clear that Lisa can't hold back her laughter looking at her balding husband. Momo is an avid fan of all kinds of heavy music, in an interview, he admitted that some heavy metal songs inspire him to create his characters. One of the actor's favorite groups is Arch Spire, whose members, at his invitation, played cameo roles in the TV series C, and Momoa himself, with vocalist Ali Peters, practiced the correct screaming technique for an important scene there. In addition, Jason can play guitar, ukulele, and drums. On his last birthday, the star was presented with a custom bass guitar Fender Precision. The actor's children also show interest in musical instruments. In 2021, another story about superheroes from the DC Comics universe was added to Momoa's filmography. Zack Snyder's Justice League. In the film, the characters played by Momoa, Ben Affleck, Ray Fisher, Henry Cavill, confront the invasion by Steppenwolf and his army of parademons. Don't count on a Batman. Why not? It's not like you coming here digging into my business, getting into my life. People from Atlanta tell me to do this, now you say do that. I want to be left alone. The actor also appeared in the role of gunsmith Duncan Idaho in the next film adaptation of the novel Dune by Frank Herbert. Me hey, you. Found some muscle? I did? A little earlier, the premiere of the movie Sweet Girl took place on Netflix, where Jason played the main role. According to critics, the picture is full of cliches, and the plot itself is quite generic. In 2023, the premiere of the film Aquaman in the Lost Kingdom is scheduled, and the actor will also take part in the thriller Fast X. When he's not at work, Momoa likes to draw. He doesn't use email and doesn't like talking on the phone. Nevertheless, Jason gets along with technology. Despite the fact that his life is connected with the film industry, Momoa does not like to watch films and prefers reading. He is especially fascinated by Japanese poetry and the work of Charles Baudelaire. The actor also devotes a lot of time to training, which he has a personal instructor for. Momoa has several tattoos on his body that have a special meaning for him. On the actor's chest, there is a tattoo with the names of his children, which are written in their handwriting. The name of a deceased friend is imprinted on his finger. The traditional Hawaiian triangles on the hand are also of considerable value for the celebrity. They are made in the form of shark's teeth and are a talisman for Jason, who is a Buddhist and often visits Tibet. 
where he receives spiritual knowledge. In his free time, he goes hiking, kayaking, and motorcycle riding. He also enjoys archery, throwing knives and axes, roller skating, snowboarding, and cycling. Unfortunately, in January 2022, Jason Momoa and Lisa Bonet announced their divorce. Now the actor's fortune totals $10 million. Before the divorce, he lived in a huge estate in the suburbs of Los Angeles worth $3.5 million. The area of land in which the estate is located is five acres and belongs to Jason's wife. She bought it back in 1995 and arranged it to her taste. Pets also live there, two half-wolves and a donkey named Freya. Jason is fond of collecting guitars, motorcycles, and cars. He has a Harley Davidson Softail Slim, a BMW R9 T Scrambler, a glamorous 1957 Harley Davidson FLH, and an old custom bike. In addition to motorcycles, the actor has a Range Rover and a Land Rover Defender, a charming pink 1955 Cadillac nicknamed Bernadette, a Ford F-150, and a whole park full of earth roamer bikes. If you follow the life of Jason Momoa, you probably have noticed that he is really fond of the color baby pink. Momoa explains this by saying that pink lowers testosterone and soothes him. He has many different things of this color, which the star often wears not only in public, but also in everyday life. We must say that he's maniacally entrepreneurial. It seems that the actor starts a business literally once every two weeks. At the moment, Momo is engaged in something with biodegradable beach shoes and sunglasses, nylon surf pants, pink boots and climbing bags, hiking backpacks, handmade knives, leather bags made of old things, belts, and reusable water bottles. What do you think is the reason behind Jason Momoa's success? Richard Gere, how the ladies' man lives and where he spends his millions. Richard Tiffany Gere was born on August 31, 1949 in a large American family of housewife Doris Ann and insurance agent Homer George Gere. Besides Richard, who was born the second, the Gears raised five children. The parents were educated but simple people and managed to give their children a happy childhood in the suburbs of New York. They tried to provide a balanced upbringing. There was room to communicate with nature because the family lived in a small rural town for creativity and sports. The future actor studied guitar with might and main, shown in the school drama club, and did gymnastics. After receiving a sports scholarship after graduation, he went to the University of Massachusetts to study philosophy and directing. At the same time, Gear dreamed of becoming a professional musician and saw himself as a world-famous trumpeter. These crazy dreams eventually prevented him from getting a degree. At first, he chased an opportunity to become a musician and then became interested in theater and dropped out of school. Finally settling in New York, Richard tried his hand at theatrical auditions and one day he was lucky. In 1975, after a series of minor characters, he got the main role in the play The Killer's Head. On stage, he was blindfolded all the time, playing a murderer sentenced to death which played into the hands of the young actor. At the time, he was extremely reserved and often got nervous, which hindered his skill. In this case, however, the audience heard only his voice, which literally mesmerized the crowd. The young actor was so talented that he was noticed by film producers. First, Gear appeared in such films as Report to the Commissioner, Looking for Mr. Goodbar, Days of Heaven, Blood Brothers, and Yanks. And then he got really lucky. The Hollywood handsome John Travolta refused the main role in the movie American Gigolo, and the job went to Gear with a fee of $35,000. Thanks to the role, he instantly gained a whole army of female fans. Not the least role in this was played by the fact that the actor had to act in some scenes completely naked. The image of the heartbreaker and the role of the lover boy was stuck to him, which over time began to weigh on him. Two years later, Richard was offered the lead role, and again, ironically, the one that Travolta refused. The film An Officer and a Gentleman was a great success and won two Emmy Academy Awards and was also recognized as one of the greatest romantic movies in history, according to the American Film Institute. I should have warned you scuzzy female types all about the Puget dudes. Those are the ones that say they're wearing a rubber, but there's really a little hole bitten in the bottom of it. <laughs> then, Richard's filmography was replenished with the movies The Honorary Console and Breathless. And in 1984, he starred in the gangster movie The Cotton Club, directed by Francis Ford Coppola, in which the actor performed several parts on the trumpet, reliving his youth. What is this, a kidnapping? Would you like that? Because I think I'm up to it. 
You do move me. I don't know why, but you do move me. In unusual places. Surprisingly, with a brilliant cast, a venerable director, and a whole galaxy of prestigious awards, the film failed at the box office. This did not prevent Richard from getting two million for the role. Next came the historical film King David, the drama Power, the action movie Miles from Home, the thrillers No Mercy with a fee of 1.5 million, and Internal Affairs. The real fame came to gear when he approached the 40-year milestone. Richard didn't want to play at all in Pretty Woman, which was originally conceived as a drama. He didn't like the script, which was changed beyond recognition. He was tired of the roles that parasitized his heartthrob image, but his agent persuaded him to go to a meeting with the actress chosen for the main role, and Julia Roberts convinced him to agree. Experts still have trouble explaining the magic ingredient that made this trivial story a huge hit. Did you really say $100 an hour? Yeah. 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 Well, if you don't have any prior engagements, I'd be very pleased if you would accompany me into the hotel. With $14 million invested in production, worldwide box office was $463 million. Perhaps the reason is the chemistry that arose on the set between the performers of the main roles, because for the sake of a happy ending, the screenwriters had to rewrite the finale of the picture. Initially, Edward did not even consider climbing the stairs to Vivian like a prince from her sweet dreams. In the original story, the rich man pushed the girl out of the car, throwing money at her. That's how the movie was supposed to end. Gear himself dislikes Pretty Woman for many reasons and emphasizes this in interviews, so he was very pleased with the offer of the master of Japanese cinematography, Akiro Kurosawa, who gave him a small role in his anti-war film Rhapsody in August. On the set, Richard had to speak Japanese, which he did not know. He had to memorize the lines by heart. The director was very worried that he would not be able to pay the Hollywood star for the work, but Gear assured him that he would play for free. As a result, the director paid him a symbolic amount and also paid for flight tickets for Gear and even offered to buy tickets for his friends if they wanted to visit Japan. Such a friend was Cindy Crawford, who had been his wife for a year. One of the most beautiful couples of that time was formed back in 1988, and in 1991, the official wedding took place in Las Vegas. The ceremony was very modest. It was attended by only four witnesses, and the rings exchanged by the newlyweds were made out of chewing candy wrappers. Many consider the wedding in Las Vegas a bad sign, and perhaps there is some truth in that since the couple divorced in 1995. Gear and Crawford chose not to make a tragedy or a performance out of this event. It went quickly and quietly, after which everyone went their own way. Gear's path at that time led him to Tibet. He met the Dalai Lama and almost became a monk, but the actor had so much life energy that he didn't fit into the novice's secluded routine. Since then, he sympathized with Tibet with all his heart. Richard spoke passionately about the plight of the region wherever he could. At one of his political gatherings, he went completely wild, promising to fight the Chinese alone if Tibet wouldn't get protection. The speech caused a murmur in the room, and only one woman found the courage to turn the situation into a joke. She turned out to be American actress Carrie Lowell, the famous Bond girl from the movie License to Kill. Very soon, Lowell became Mr. Gear's second wife. In 2000, the couple had a son, whom they named Homer after his grandfather's. Meanwhile, Richard Gere's film career was on the rise. He managed to appear in such films as Final Analysis, in which he also acted as a producer and the band played on, Mr. Jones, First Night, Red Corner, and Primal Fear. For shooting in the detective movie Summersby and the drama Intersection, the actor received five and seven million, respectively. And in the action movie The Jackal, he co-starred with Bruce Willis. However, the guys didn't get along very well and they swore never to act together again. Give over, Preston. Who are you really looking for? A pro. Calls himself the Jackal. Oh, that fella. The mystery man. By the way, Gear could have played the main role in the movie, Die Hard, which he refused for some reason. Meanwhile, the creators of Pretty Woman decided to make money by resurrecting the duet of Richard Gere and Julia Roberts in the romantic movie Runaway Bride. The film was a success. It earned $300 million at the box office and brought Gear a fee of $13 million. Immediately after this movie, the actor flashed his dramatic talent in the role of a rich man who finds himself powerless in the face of his lover's illness and death. We are talking about the film Autumn in New York, where he co-starred with Winona Ryder. You've got the hiccups. Are you kidding? I would go with you in a heartbeat. <laughs> You're fabulous. 
Yeah? Uh-oh. Uh oh, dear. Must be me. Then the depressive, mystical thriller The Mothman Prophecies and the drama Unfaithful were released, which together brought $30 million to the actor's bank account. Another work of gear in the early thousands was the melodrama Dr. T and the Woman About a Gynecologist. To better prepare for the role, Richard took the opportunity when his wife gave birth to their son, he studied the work of the maternity ward. In 2002, the name of Richard Gere again rumbled around the world, and the occasion was the release of the musical film Chicago. I could be an awfully good sport. Good, you got that out of your system. Now listen, you mean just one thing to me. You call me when you got $5,000. The luxurious crime musical masterpiece astounded not only the audience but also the critics, who nominated it for 13 Oscars. BAFTA, Golden Globe, and Grammy Awards could not ignore the movie either. They literally showered the creators and actors of the film with awards. Gear won the Golden Globe for Best Actor in a Comedy or Musical. And by the way, the role of the creative lawyer could have gone to actor Hugh Jackman, who refused it, which he later regretted very much. Interestingly enough, the first film adaptation of Chicago was supposed to be made back in the 70s with Frank Sinatra, Lisa Minnelli, and Goldie Hawn in the lead roles. In 2004, a remake of the Japanese romantic comedy Shall We Dance was released, where the actor rocked the dance floor with Jennifer Lopez and Susan Sarandon, with whom he was in a romantic relationship in the early 80s. Beverly, dance with me. Wow. Yeah, you do. No, yeah, you've been dancing with me for 19 years. The actor devoted the following years to the films that did not receive much praise. B Season, The Hoax, The Flock, I'm Not There, The Hunting Party, and Nights in Rodanthe. The next takeoff happened only in 2009 when the actor starred in the incredibly touching, kind, and sad film Hachi, A Dog's Tale. All right, come here, come here, come here, come here. <laughs> okay, it's all right. While sentimental viewers around the world were crying their eyes out, its worldwide box office totaled more than 50 million. After the biographical movie Amelia, the crime thrillers Brooklyn's Finest and The Double, as well as a documentary about one of the teachers of Buddhism, Brilliant Moon, the film Arbitrage was released, in which Gear again co-starred with Susan Sarandon. Her teacher was Mr. James. Mr. James said, world events all revolve around five things. M-O-N-E-Y. This is freshman econ. <laughs> no, it was a fifth grade econ. Richard Gere was nominated for a Golden Globe for his performance. In 2013, the marriage of Gere and Carrie Lowell broke up when the woman found out about her husband's affair with a TV presenter of Indian origin. The separation this time was a difficult ordeal for Richard. His wife attacked him with accusations and draconian financial claims. But soon, the man met a new love. By that time, the actor had two unsuccessful marriages and a whole series of relationships of varying degree of seriousness. Uma Thurman, Kim Bassinger, Priscilla Presley, Barbara Streisand, Diana Ross, and a dozen other Hollywood beauties dated him in different years. But it seems that now Gear has stopped in his search. At one of the film festivals, he met Alejandra Siva, a journalist and the daughter of a former manager of the Real Madrid Football Club. The 34-year age difference did not bother the mature Silver Fox at all. That's how he was nicknamed in Hollywood for his refusal to dye his gorgeous gray hair. And after three years of relationships, he led his beloved one down the aisle. A modest celebration took place in April 2018 in New York and gathered only a circle of the couple's closest friends. A year later, they had a son together, Alexander, and in 2020, another heir was born, whose name was not disclosed. Now, the actor can afford to stop thinking about money and choose roles exclusively to his liking. Recently, his filmography more and more often includes roles in the outsure and low-budget movies. Among them are the film anthology Movie 43, the drama's Time Out of Minds, the Benefactor, Norman, The Moderate Rise, and Tragic Fall of a New York Fixer, and Three Christ. The melodrama, The Second Best Exotic Marigold Hotel, the thriller The Dinner, and the miniseries Mother, Father, Son. In January 2023, a comedy starring the actor, Maybe I Do, was released. Richard Gere's fortune is estimated at $120 million, which makes him one of the richest actors in the industry. He had advertising contracts with the Italian car brand Lancia, the Visa payment system, the brand of carbonated drinks Orangina, and others.
He invested money in a small luxury hotel Bedford Post Inn, which is located in the suburbs of New York. Guests can meditate, do yoga, and enjoy delicious dishes made from organic produce from the hotel's own farm. Gear himself and his family live in a spacious mansion located just an hour's drive from Manhattan, which he spent $10 million to renovate in 2020. The total area of the residential parts is more than 8,600 square feet, which consists of seven comfortable bedrooms, living rooms, and a wine cellar. The couple also chose to buy a vacant plot with a swimming pool in the yard next door to expand their land to 34 acres. Experts estimate this transaction at 700000 Until 2020, Richard owned another residence in Pound Ridge for almost 35 years. He bought it for $1.5 million and managed to sell it for $24 million. Charming, spacious, colonial-style villa with an area of more than 10,000 square feet is complemented by a swimming pool and access to a pond. This deal was not the only one that Gear managed to profit from. He bought a luxury home in Southampton for only $6.5 million in 2006 and sold it for $36 million. Richard Gear also has urban real estate. Since 2016, he has owned an apartment in New York in the Gramercy Park area, worth a little more than $2 million. The property consists of two bedrooms and a living room, which the the actor renovated and furnished according to his taste. It is reported that his friend, actor, and TV presenter Jimmy Fallon persuaded him to make this purchase. Until 2011, Gear had another apartment, which he owned for more than 20 years and sold for $2.6 million. Now, these spacious and bright apartments can be rented by anyone for $20,000 a month. Richard Gear is a committed Buddhist and a life lover. He desperately fights against injustice and stands for the restoration of peace. In addition to fighting for the freedom of Tibet, because of which he was banned from entering China for life, he is engaged in environmental health and human rights issues, supporting many humanitarian international campaigns. He is also outraged by current events, even auctioned off one of his cars to donate the proceeds to charity funds to help victims of the war in Ukraine. A 1999 Jaguar XK8 collector's convertible was sold for 31000 This gorgeous car has a 5-speed automatic transmission and an engine capacity of 4 liters. At the time of sale, the mileage was 31000 In everyday life, the actor was seen driving an Audi RS6. By his age, Richard Gere has received everything one could dream of. Three sons, a beloved and loving wife, fame, and wealth. It seems that the saying, a good deed is never lost, finds direct confirmation in his life path. His motto is, stop treating yourself like an afterthought. Eat delicious food, walk in the sunshine, jump in the ocean, say the truth like you're carrying in your heart like hidden treasure. Be silly, be kind, be weird, there's no time for anything else. Do you agree with Silver Fox's statement? If you like the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything interesting.